uh, brothers and sisters uh, to our uh, six focus conference uh, last week. We heard from our dear respected Professor Emeritus uh, Osman Baka on the main ideas on the issue of Islam and uh, religiosity. Uh, and today, these two full days, uh, we will listen to a lecture of white topic of papers from our friends. Uh, we have two objectives uh, in organizing uh, this conference. Uh, first is to provide um, a forum or platform uh, for our scholars, uh, young and new, uh, to present their work, to present their ideas related to the theme, to the topic, uh, in a professional way. And then we will uh, uh, we will invite later on not not in this session a comment from people who are in the field. Initially, we want to invite uh, a scholar or resource person to join us, but uh, since we don't have enough uh, preparation uh, in terms of our staff, in terms of speakers, let us uh, present first, and then we will ask we will send the video. Uh, recorded video uh, to our scholars to listen and to comment uh, for me. Uh, that's the first objective. And the second objective is we want to provide a network uh, among uh, especially the young scholars, uh, postgraduate students, so that they can share their work, they can share their research, uh, they can benefit from each other. But uh, most important is uh, in this day and age uh, where people are connected. So, inshallah, it will be good to know our friends who are together in doing this work to have the, to share the spirit, uh, to share the enthusiasm uh, in this work. We, we never know in next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, we will work again together. Uh, maybe when Brother Arpaslan, Brother Nuruddin, Brother Zainal, Brother Zamer become somebody big, so I can tell them, oh, last time I, I chat your session, <laughs> don't forget about me. So that's all about networking. So for our first session today, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have four papers uh, already with us. Uh, all our presenters are here. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have uh, my dear brother Nuruddin uh, from Gajah Mada. Uh, he's always with us in our online classes and asking all the pertinent and, and relevant questions. We are so proud of him, Alhamdulillah, he is with us. And secondly, we have uh, Brother Zainal Umam. Uh, he is from, uh, uh, from where, Brother? <laughs> I have your CV here. <laughs> uh, uh, from Uin Jakarta, but currently he is in uh, Lampung, uh, Indonesia. And uh, we have with us my dear brother Al Paslan. Uh, he is my colleague at this tech together. He is originally from Turkey. And finally, we have my dear brother Esamer. Uh, he is also in Malaysia. Uh, so uh, so uh, we will invite uh, brother Nuruddin first, and then brother Zainul, and then brother Paslan, and brother Esamer. Just a sequence. Everyone will have 10 minutes. Uh, I will interrupt at a, at, at a 10 minute time. You still have another two, three minutes to continue. And then, after everyone is done, we will have a uh, question and answer among our panelists. Uh, we also, we invite our friends who are joining us. Um, since we are not many and we are not expecting many people to come, uh, the, the audio is all on. You can unmute yourself. Uh, I don't think there will be no disturbance this time. <laughs> Actually, and now there's someone who always follow us and always want to post something irrelevant in our chat box, in our uh, video. But we take it out. I don't think this will happen this time. So you can ask questions uh, for 30 minutes. And if the speakers uh, still need time to finish up the presentation, we will allow them also. Uh, we will go to 90 minutes or 100 minutes or 1 hour, 45 minutes. We are not going to spend the whole hours. So uh, this is uh, recorded uh, both in on my PC and also on our YouTube and our uh, Facebook Live. 
But if you need to edit it, you can edit it later on. If because see that uh, I don't like what I see, I want, to, I want to take it out from the video. We can we can do that. It's not not, not an issue. So uh, let me introduce uh, my dear uh, brother Nuruddin. Uh, he has a very nice uh, CV. Let me just uh, read it uh, very quick. Uh, Brother Nuruddin is a doctoral student at the Department of Politics and Government, Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh, from 2006-2017, he was actively involved in the Power, Welfare and Democracy Project, organized by Universitas Gajah Mada and University of Oslo. So there is a long, uh, there's a one full paragraph of CV, uh, but I think uh, that will be enough for now. Uh, we will know Brother Nuruddin and uh, and he's doing his PhD in political science. So with uh, full respect, we invite our dear brother Nuruddin uh, to present his paper on Islamization of history, Kunto Wijaya model, Nur Kunto Wijaya model. Brother Nuruddin. Uh, thank you, Brother Shahran. Uh, um, uh, maybe uh, I want to... Uh, saya minta izin untuk berbicara dalam uh, bilingual. Okay. Uh, so we, we will be using uh, dual language uh, bahasa Inggris. Uh, sebentar. Apakah uh, terlihat apa present PowerPoint? Pokoknya belum. Oh, dah. Ya, ya. Oh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Good morning everyone here. Uh, <coughs> I will present uh, my uh, PowerPoint about Islamis Islamization of history uh, Kuntawijaya model. Kuntawijaya is a scholar from uh, Gajah Mada University. Uh, is uh, at the Department of History. Uh, 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 ada beberapa hal mungkin yang perlu saya um, jelaskan sebagai pengantar bahwa pertama kali saya ingin menegaskan uh, bahwa Kuntowijoyo ini bisa di apa namanya bisa dikaitkan dengan proyek Islami peng Islamisasi pengetahuan secara umum. Yang kedua adalah uh, nanti PowerPoint ini akan menjelaskan dari mana pengaruh uh, gagasan Islamisasi secara itu muncul dan ketiga bagaimana Kuntowijoyo mengembangkannya. Uh, gitu. The first I want to highlight that the in Indonesia often the idea of kontowijo is con contrasted with the idea of Islamization of knowledge. Uh, and this study attempt to tackle such a, a narrative by emphasizing that kontowijo intellectual project can actually be interpreted as the project of Islamization of knowledge as well. Uh, I believe that the Islamization project pioneered by Kuntoi Wijoyo has its own uniqueness, namely the Islamization of the course of history. Jadi bukan hanya Islamisasi teks sejarah, tapi Islamisasi jalannya sejarah. Uh, or, we, we, or, or we can say that Kuntoi Wijoyo want to transform, uh, to make uh, the historical transformation based on the Tauhid principle. <coughs> And um, in Indonesia, there's a various... Uh, academic discourse in constructing the figure of Kunto Wijoyo. Jadi ada berapa pendapat di dalam dunia akademik tentang bagaimana sebenarnya posisi Kunto Wijoyo, apakah dia itu kontra dengan islamisasi pengetahuan, apakah dia itu tadinya kontra dan kemudian mensupport, ataukah yang terakhir dia itu dari awal proyeknya adalah mensupport the idea of islamization dan This paper is agree with the third uh, opinion that Kunto Wijoyo from uh, the start of his intellectual uh, project uh, supporting the idea of Islamization. Uh, saya tidak ingin berpanjang lebar karena waktunya hanya 10 menit. Uh, seringkali uh, Kunto Wijoyo diposisikan oleh sebagian akademisi itu bertentangan dengan Islamisasi hanya membaca buku yang uh, sebelah kanan ini sementara dia punya berbagai buku. Uh, so I, I can say that uh, to understanding Kunto Wijoyo, we must uh, look uh, at his work uh, from various uh, 
various work ya. Jadi ada berbagai karya sehingga kita harus membacanya secara teliti supaya kita mendapatkan uh, kesimpulan bahwa sebenarnya Kunto Wijoyo itu tidak sedang menolak islamisasi. <tuh> Di sini kita akan masuk ke pembahasan berikutnya. <tuh> The peculiarity of Kunto Wijoyo model of Islamization are not unique. Considering that the various exponent of Islamization have their own characteristic. Jadi, eh, kenapa saya bisa katakan Kunto Wijoyo itu adalah eh, juga tokoh yang sepakat dengan Islamisasi pengetahuan? Karena sebenarnya dari, dari berbagai model Islamisasi, pakar Islamisasi juga mempunyai eh, karakteristiknya sendiri. Sehingga kita bisa mengatakan Kunto Wijoyo juga mempunyai satu karakteristiknya sendiri. Uh, for example, Faruqi, Ismail Radal Faruqi, emphasized the project of Islamization of discipline as an effort to counter the symptom of objective secularism. Istilah objective secularism ini dipakai oleh Kunta Wijoyo bahwa uh, sekularisme yang terjadi kepada uh, entitas di luar manusia, misalkan kepada uh, apa namanya pendidikan, kepada ekonomi, dan lain-lain itu namanya objective secularism. Uh, and this is different, for example, with al atas style of Islamization, which emphasizing the Islamization of individual thoughts throughout the strategy of Islamization of language and horizon, or we, we can say worldview, as an effort to counter the symptom of subjective secularism. Jadi, uh, Faruqi mempunyai satu ciri khas yang agak berbeda, walaupun dalam perkembangnya ini bisa didiskusikan lebih lanjut, tapi memang ada kekhasan. Jadi Kunto Wijoyo pun nanti punya kekhasan. Saya katakan Kunto Wijoyo with his, his uh, with his uh, Islamization of history attempt to counterbalance objective and subjective secularism while emphasizing the prophetic social science project or we call uh, ilmu sosial prophetic and prophetic literature or sastra prophetic as a strategic tools. But uh, here I want to highlight the Islamization of history as uh, umbrella for uh, Kunto Wijoyo project and we will touch the prophetic social science uh, and, and not uh, prof and not prophetic literature because uh, uh, it, it needs uh, more time to explain about the difference between prophetic social science and uh, prophetic literature. <coughs> Uh, jadi misalkan ini contoh-contohnya uh, berbagai eksponen islamisasi memiliki karakteristiknya ciri khasnya sendiri Se- termasuk juga Profesor Malik Badri yang kemarin uh, baru saja meninggalkan kita semua <tuh> dan I want to highlight that Kuntowi Joyo and the idea of islamization of his history is has characteristic that distinguish it from other Islamization of history project that have developed by many Muslim intellectual. For example, uh, Islamization of history project in the in the hand of Faruqi, who tried to challenge the writing of global history, which placed Islam as an anti-science, yes, anti-science civilization, in contrast to the West, with, with, which is claimed to be the beacon of the world civilization. Jadi misalkan ini bisa diperbandingkan dengan uh, karyanya Faruqi yang dia ingin me- men- melawan apa yang namanya penulisan sejarah yang kemudian memarginalkan intelek- tradisi intelektual Islam. Kemudian yang uh, yang digambarkan dalam sejarah seakan-akan hanyalah uh, Barat yang dapat dikatakan sebagai mercusuar peradaban. Uh, itu karakteristiknya. Sementara Kunto Wijoyo emphasizing the Islamization of history as a project to transform history uh, does not does not stop at the Islamization of historical textbook. Jadi di dalam tradisi uh, Islamisasi sejarah sendiri Kunto Wijoyo juga memiliki karakteristik yang membedakannya misalkan dengan Hamka, dengan uh, Faruqi, dengan Imadu, Ima Dudin Halil. Jadi di dalam uh, model Kunto Wijoyo kita tidak hanya mengin- merubah Uh, interpretasi atas sejarah yang di apa namanya dipengaruhi oleh orientalisme bias-bias barat tapi dia juga berusaha untuk mentransformasi sejarah makanya ini bisa dilihat dari judul-judul bukunya dinamika sejarah umat Islam Indonesia budaya dan masyarakat dan paradigma Islam uh, interpretation for action kan begitu nah, berikutnya uh, kita akan meninjau mengenai 
asal mula dari mana uh, ide islamisasi sejarah yang khas ini bisa muncul dari seorang Kunto Wijoyo. Saya mengatakan bahwa islamisasi history as radicalization of Indonesian centric discourse. Jadi saya ingin mengatakan bahwa inilah sumber inspirasi dari Kunto Wijoyo yaitu dari Sartono Kartojirjo Ideas. Uh, Sartono Kartojirjo is a Kunto Wijoyo lecture at Gajah Mada University. Jadi dia adalah gurunya Kunto Wijoyo. <tuh> Uh, dan interestingly Sartono Indonesian centric ideas are also influenced by his personal existential experience uh, that is similar to uh, uh, to the experience uh, to the personal experience uh, by Gunto Wijoyo jadi menariknya bahwa Sartono itu juga mengembangkan ide uh, Indonesia centric namanya itu karena berbasis pada pengalaman eksistensialnya. Kunto Wijoyo juga mengembangkan islamisasi sejarah itu juga karena pengalaman eksistensialnya selama hidupnya. Jadi keduanya, both of them are set, set in it by seeing the phenomenon of marginalization of Wong Cili or the oppressed. Jadi keduanya itu bermula idenya dari karena mereka sedih, karena mereka terketuk hatinya melihat uh, penindasan dari orang-orang kecil. Misalkan kalau di dalam uh, gurunya Kunto Wijaya itu Sartono melihat uh, nasib para petani yang termarginalkan atau juga pengrajin atau bahkan juga kaum muslimin secara general kalau dalam Kunto Wijaya. Dan pada, kita perlu melihat konteks pada waktu itu Indonesia sedang berada di tahap pembangunan uh, di bawah pemerintahan Soeharto sehingga pada era pembangunan itu banyak korban, rakyat menjadi korban baik oleh perkembangan industri ataupun juga negara jadi ini contohnya ada seorang namanya AM Fatwa yang dia dituduh menjadi radikal dan kemudian dia ditangkap di siksa jadi itu yang pemandangan sehari-hari dan tercermin juga di dalam novel-novel Kunto Wijoyo jadi menceritakan penderitaan orang-orang kecil yang dia sendiri lihat gitu Nah. Two minutes. Oh, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Uh, like Kunto Wijaya, who, who witnessed his night sniper experiencing marginalization due to due to, to state power and capital, Sartono is also concerned about the fate of marginalized fa- farmer, ya. <tuh> Dan kemudian dari sinilah kemudian Sartono berusaha merekonstruksi dari uh, apa ilmu sejarah. supaya dapat membela orang-orang kecil maksudnya begitu karena tadi waktunya dua menit saya akan percepat <tuh> jadi eh, satu hal yang eh, kemudian ber- berpengaruh kepada pemikiran Kunto Wijaya adalah eh, Sartono itu menyoroti tentang bagaimana eh, petani itu bisa melawan kolonial padahal eh, bagi Sartono petani seringkali tadi dianggap sebagai suatu Uh, apa, kelompok yang marginal tertindas. Nah di situ ternyata ada kesadaran khas petani waktu itu, yaitu terkait dengan ratu adil yang membuat mereka bisa melawan uh, uh, kolonial Belanda. Dan ide itulah yang kemudian menginspirasi Kunto Wijoyo bahwa ternyata uh, kesadaran tentang ratu adil yang uh, bisa dan kemudian ini juga sebenarnya terkait dengan uh, apa? Islam gitu, itu ternyata bisa me- melakukan perubahan sehingga itulah yang kemudian digali lebih lanjut oleh Kunto Wijoyo nanti di dalam uh, islamisasi sejarahnya <tuh> ada dua hal yang menjadi penting di dalam islamisasi sejarah Kunto Wijoyo yaitu dia menggunakan uh, dua teori besar yang berkembang di barat yaitu Marxisme dan juga nanti teorinya August Com. Jadi yang pertama dia akan melakukan islamisasi Marxisme, yang kedua nanti sebagai tambahan dia akan melakukan islamisasi August Com, ya teorinya tentang uh, perkembangan sadaran. <tuh> Jadi yang penting dari Islam dari Marxisme adalah bahwa sejarawan itu dituntut untuk tidak haja, tidak hanya menginterpretasi ulang sejarah tapi juga ikut serta dalam perubahan sejarah. Itulah yang di, di, di apa? disetujui Kunto Wijoyo. Tapi kemudian Marxisme banyak hal yang ditolak oleh Kunto Wijoyo seperti misalkan materialisme yang menjadi basisnya, kemudian uh, strategi perubahannya yang menekankan kepada politik itu berdarah-darah, 
itu tidak setujui dan kemudian yang menjadi aktor perubahan bukanlah kelas pekerja tapi umah ya kalau untuk wijaya jadi ya kita akan cepat saja jadi bisa, bisa disambung di pengunjung nanti yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jadi yang yang penting kenapa Kunto Wijoyo harus menambahkan August Com karena Marxisme kan secara tradisional di apa namanya menekankan pada interpretasi kelas pekerja sebagai agen perubahan sementara tidak ada tidak ada eh, apa namanya penjelasan tentang bagaimana umat Islam orang beragama itu bisa menjadi agen perubahan maka dari situlah eh, Tawi Jaya mengambil idenya Kom untuk melengkapi eh, Marx tadi yang sudah di, dia coba Islamisasi tadi karena tidak basisnya tidak lagi materialisme tapi Tauhid gitu. jadi August Kom digunakan oleh Kunto Wijoyo untuk melihat uh, perkembangan dari uh, kesadaran umat Islam karena uh, bagi Kunto Wijoyo walaupun secara ideal umat Islam itu mestinya berbasis kepada tauhid ya kan sehingga dia bisa menjadi uh, agen perubahan tapi yang terjadi itu tidak sedang ada problem pada kesadaran umat sehingga dengan menggunakan uh, August Kom uh, dia bisa memahami lebih baik tentang terjadinya uh, problem pada kesadaran umat dan kemudian dengan juga August Kom dia uh, Kunto Wijoyo ingin mencari titik di mana uh, perubahan itu dimungkinkan karena menurut August Kom kan kesadaran itu memang bisa berubah. Nah, ini perbandingan antara August Kom dengan Kunto Wijoyo, saya akan jelaskan singkat saja. Jadi Kunto Wijoyo percaya bahwa setelah uh, kejatuhan peradaban Islam setelah ke apa namanya serangan dari Mongol itu juga mempengaruhi kesadaran umat secara kolektif. Jadi eh, terjadi decline of Islamic scientific tradition dan and the spread of mystification of Islam. Eh, perlu digarisbawahi mystification of Islam bukan berarti eh, antipati terhadap tasawuf tapi kemudian di sini adalah mystification of islam ini adalah separation of islam from reality jadi kemudian mundur nanti akan akan dijelaskan lebih lanjut that hinder the active role of ummah ya. kemudian Kunto Wijo secara spesifik mengambil kasus di Indonesia karena studinya dia tentang Indonesia bahwa setelah kejatuhan demak umat islam di Indonesia sebagai contoh nyata itu mengalami tadi uh, mistifikasi atau mythical stage of umah consciousness di mana kemudian uh, bukan tradisi ilmiah yang dikembangkan tapi kemudian um, kepercayaan kepada banyak makhluk halus dan lain-lain sehingga perubahan itu malah kemudian minta kepada misalkan Nyi Roro Kidul salah satu apa yang namanya ini um, mythical figures the, the very famous in um, yeah, Indonesia Ewan <laughs> Can you wrap it up? Oke okay, oke okay. dan uh, hal ini berlanjut kepada uh, dari mistik ke ideological stage jadi di pada tahap ini ternyata orang bernama Cokro Aminoto sudah mulai perubahan sehingga dia tidak lagi statis tidak lagi meminta kepada misalkan tadi makhluk halus tapi kemudian dia berusaha untuk berdiri menentang uh, kondisi yang tidak ideal dan juga menentang kolonial ini contohnya bahwa ini gambar bahwa orang Islam itu dengan orang Barat itu setara jadi duduk kalau kalau berdiri ya sama tinggi kalau duduk ya mau duduk tidak mau kok yang Barat jadi lebih tinggi sama itu dan kemudian yang terakhir adalah perkembangan pada masa sains jadi Kunto Wijoyo mencontohkan organisasi Muhammadiyah di mana pada waktu itu sudah mulai mengadopsi uh, pendidikan Barat misalkan atau juga uh, kesehatan institusi kesehatan tapi kemudian coba diislamisasikan diberikan spirit Islam walaupun Wijoyo tidak mengatakan itu ideal tapi itu sebagai eksperimen pertama sehingga untuk Wijoyo mengatakan bahwa ini sudah mulai uh, apa namanya kembali lagi tradisi uh, intelektual Islam dan kemudian bahkan mulai bisa mengkritisi tradisi keilmuan Barat yang waktu itu masuk ke dalam uh, dunia Islam khususnya Indonesia ini contoh-contohnya dan kemudian, nah inilah yang kemudian dipakai untuk Kunto Wijoyo bahwa kemudian eh, di zaman industrial semacam itu sebenarnya sudah ada peluang bagi umat Islam untuk kembali menjadi agen perubahan karena tadi sudah tradisi ilmu sebenarnya sudah mulai dikembangkan 
Nah, kemudian uh, Kuntowisyo menekankan bahwa di masa industrial ini yang paling penting menjadi tantangan adalah struktur abstrak atau abstrak structure atau uh, yang dominan dan kemudian ini memediasi relasi antara manusia. Dan ini dijelaskan lebih lanjut dalam bukunya. Dan kemudian struktur tadi yang abstrak tadi inilah yang membikin apa yang me- menghasilkan banyak sekali dehumanisasi. Sehingga bagi Kuntowijoyo ini solusinya adalah karena tadi budaya ilmu sudah mulai berkembang jadi dia me- menyerukan untuk reconstruction of mainstream science as the base of uh, umah consciousness and historical change. Jadi karena walaupun uh, era industrial itu tadi di, di apa namanya dipenuhi oleh dehumanisasi akan tetapi satu hal yang menarik dalam era industrialisasi adalah ilmu itu menjadi fondasi sehingga dimungkinkan dengan perubahan ilmu eh, laju industrialisme bisa di manusiakan kembali sehingga contoh Wijoyo kemudian masuk ke dalam eh, permasalahan ilmu dan kemudian menyatakan bahwa harus ada perubahan dari contemporary science design dari logic of differentiation yang kemudian menihilkan agama kemudian menjadi reconstruction traction of science berbasis logika differentiation di mana religion ini tauhid maksudnya untuk menjadi fondasi dari uh, pengetahuan. Di sini yeah. kita bisa melihat ya bahwa apa namanya? ada titik temu yang sangat besar dalam konteks uh, antara Kuntawijo dengan ide islamisasi pengetahuan dan kemudian sebagai penutup bisa kita katakan the idea of islamization of history uh, that was championed by Kuntawijo want to place Muslim as Uh, agent of change yeah. dan one fundamental change that has target uh, the islamization of history was a transformation of anonymous structure in the age of industrialization and this anonymous structure has a dehumanizing effect both for muslim, non-muslim and also for non-human being and it is hoped that this transformation of history will benefit all creatures on this earth uh, Uh, we can say that Islam as a blessing for humankind and nature. Uh, maybe uh, this is the end of my presentation. I uh, I end my presentation here. Terima kasih, saudara Sahran. Terima kasih atas uh, waktu yang tambahannya. Terima kasih. Thank you, Badan Nurudin. Uh, okay, Badan Nurudin has put me in very difficult spot. <laughs> Because all presenters are all my close friends. They will say, oh, you give Nurudin 20 minutes and I'm only 10 minutes. <laughs> so the examiner will come to me. <laughs> He will also ask for 20 minutes. <laughs> But it's okay. I know the topic is difficult. It's great. So it, we can't compress in 10 minutes. So inshallah, we look forward for the paper, Brother Nurudin. It's very interesting. Uh, I have a few comments at the end, inshallah. Maybe relevant, maybe not relevant. Now we invite uh, our dear brother Muhammad Zainul Umam. Uh, he is from uh, Lampung, uh, Indonesia. Uh, he obtained uh, his uh, bachelor and masters from University Semarang, uh, Wahid Hashim. Uh, currently, he is doing his PhD uh, at Win Jakarta, Jakarta Islamic University in Islamic Education. Uh, brother uh, Zainal will be presenting on analysis of moral education development in universities in Indonesia. We invite Brother uh, Zainal to Go ahead, Brother. Thank you all for time. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, my address is made up to you. My name is Muhammad Zainul Umam. I'm from Jakarta Islamic University. Uh, my title of paper is Okay. Okay. Analysis of moral education development in universities in Indonesia. Uh, one of the national objective of the Indonesian nation is in paragraph 4 of the preamble 
to the 19 and 45 constitution is to educate the life of the nation. The immersion of the nation's life can be successful through good education. In his speech, the four president, Abdurrahman Wahid, once said the, that to achieve a development, the civilization people can get a good education. In accordance with the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi that he teaches, because in the Prophet was sent to improve human morality. In law number 20 of 2003 on the national education system, it has been affirmed that national education serves to develop the ability and form defined national character and civilization in order to educate the life of the nation, aiming to develop the potential of learners to become human beings who believe and for good God Almighty, noble character, healthy, knowledgeable, capable, creative, independent, and become democratic and responsibility citizen. Through education, both formal and non-formal human character is formed. Character is the nature of security, character or ethics that characterize a person or group of people and the values of human behavior related to God Almighty, self, fellow human beings, environment, and nationality manifested in touch, attitudes, feelings, words, and deeds based on norms of religion, law, manners, culture, and custom. Character can also be interpreted as the same of character and ethic, so that the character of the nation is identical with the character of the nation or the ethics of the nation. A nation of character is a nation that is characterful and ethical. On the contrary, a nation that is not of character is a nation that 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 does not or lacks character or does not have standard of norm and good behavior. It can be confirmed that character education is effort designed and implemented systemically to help learners understand and the values of human behavior related to good almighty, self, fellow human beings, environment, and nationality manifested in touch, attitudes, spelling words, and deeds based on religious. There are seven uh, main factors that reflect the character of the Indonesian a nation according to Arikinanjar, honesty, responsibility, visionary, discipline, cooperation, fairness, caring. The basic character of the nation that is based on real life is not other than Ahlakul Karimah itself. The values of Ahlakul Karimah as the basis of the nation's character will be very relevant if applied. For all Indonesians, in this case, especially for a student with the existence of character education based on Ahlakul Karimah, this is applied systematically and continuously. A student or student will understand more about true character of the Indonesian nation. The character is expected to be a whole personality that reflects the harmony and harmony of the all happy, honesty, and sense of responsibility, pikir, intelligence, raga, health, and hygiene, as well as rasa, care, and karsa, expertise, and creativity. There are three parties that have an important role in character wedding, namely family, school, community. Based on the description, it can be analyzed that forming a character is not only a tax on campus or formal school, but more, more importantly, a family. This is because family is the first and foremost place of learning in shaping one's character. When they are under seven years old, it's the most important time in instilling character in children, then continued in schools and colleges. In the student college environment, is the most sensitive element to respond to the nation problem as a promoter of people for that concern the interest of general public. In essence, character education aims to form a nation that is resilient, competitive, novel, moral, you're joined together, patriotic, dynamically, developed, and sense oriented and technologically oriented, which are all input by part and pity to God Almighty, based on Ahlakul Karima. That thought be the spirit of universities to give birth to students who have superior personality, global insight, and clear heart of noble character. The younger generation has an important role in the development of the nation, according to 
according to secmec.com by Hatta Raja, by Hatta Raja Sa, 2007, the function of the younger generation is building the nation's character. The younger generation as the rebuilder of the character builder. The younger generation as character enables. The younger generation is character engineers is in line with the need of adaptive competition of the younger generation to strengthen the relations of the Indonesian nation. Research result, a moral and character education in Wahid University of Semarang. The form of character education at Wahid University of Semarang are not directly written, but a statement from mission at Wahid University of Semarang illustrate that the illustration has implemented and implemented re religious-based character education, as also said by the rector, Mr. Nur Ahmad. A real education must touch uh, three aspects, namely cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. For this, for this, we include character education values in our campus, activities include in the extracurricular. For our lecturer and employers uh, in Wahid Asim, Character education is not something that is foreign to them because basically every activity they are required to realize from of character education, such as clean living, littering in this place, a saying polish and friendly, timely discipline, telling the truth and other aspects. According to Mr. Asr Itohir, as in fact uh, of Faculty of Islamic Religion in Wahid Azim, that mentoring program, habituation with religious studies, Uh, federal uh, funeral prayers and awkward prayers when they are local resident, hoodie, uh, and other activities that are daily and weekly are activities carried out intensively and structured. The focus more the assessment of character education development, it can be grouped into two ways, namely integrated in the learning process. Character education program outside the subject, habituation week, Mentoring. Conclusion. From the above discussion, it can be confirmed that character education is effort designed and implemented systemically to help learners understand the values of human behavior related to good almighty, self, fellow, human beings, environment, and nationality uh, manifested in the mind, attitudes, feelings, words, deeds based on religious norms, law, manners, culture, and custom, which are in inspirable from the values of Ahlakul Karimah. Based on the data from research obtained, conclusion can be drawn about moral and character education at Wahid Hashim University in the form of program uh, that are directly integrated and internalized into every learning in the classroom and outside the classroom. Although it looks very simple, but from habituation, discipline, small responsibilities with accurate control mix, students have a solid character. The program can be classified classified into two of them. Character education that is integrated in the learning process. The existence of program outside the learning process, habituation with, and mentoring. Mentoring is a program that serves a control as well as a continuation of a character education that is more focused on moral coaching. For semester uh, one until four, mentoring is carried out every day in the morning by the respective lectures. But for semester uh, five and six, held once a week by forming halakoh or mentoring, which consists of which consists of uh, nine until ten students. Thanks. Uh, for all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But well, I don't know. This exactly. I think twelve uh, minutes. <laughs> Less than 12 minutes, Alhamdulillah. A very interesting topic here in IIU in Malaysia. We have an uh, in-depth study on the uh, study on the content of Islamization. How much Islamization actually they are teaching in the actual coursework. I think this is relevant to, to the topic. So our next speaker is uh, our dear brother Al Paslan uh, on Basi. Was born yes. in Ankara. Uh, and uh, his early education is in Turkey and did his master's at IIUM. Currently, he is a PhD student uh, at his tech uh, IIUM. His paper will be on the effect of Islamic tradition on resistance to colonial mindset in Malaysia. Uh, Prof. Uh, Brother Alpha. Yes, Assalamualaikum to everyone. 
uh, first of all, I would like to thank to our dear brother, Brad Shahram, uh, to give us the opportunity. Then, um, uh, yeah. try again, I will try to share my screen. Ya Allah. Thank you. <laughs> this is the first time I changed my, my PC. Uh, oh, okay. so, Take it easy. Yeah. Why I am not able to see the screen? Uh, it doesn't, you have not shared. It doesn't say here in our... Yeah, I'm our clicking share screen. Okay. Then I'm not able to see the screen. Mm. If you like, Akhi, you can email me the slide. I'll download it and present it for you, inshallah. If you would like to consider. Allah uh, Allah. Could you say again, please? If you want, you can email me your slides. Okay. I'll download it and I will present for you. And then you just basically talk. Okay, okay, okay. If you sure. like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. So oh, sorry. Yes. I think you should open your slide first. I mean, it is already open. And only you can share. I mean, you know, this is a clear in chat screen. I, I have the slide, but I different laptop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using a different PC. So, Okay, uh, while waiting for the slide, I think uh, there are, uh, we take questions from Brother Nuruddin first. Nuruddin, there are three questions in the chat box. Uh, can you reply it uh, briefly while we're waiting for Brother Apaslan? I think the first one is, can you see from the chat box, Brother Nuruddin? Uh, first one from Brother Ezamel. Does Koto Jaya have an adversive, adverse attitude regarding the Brahmada Abdul uh, from Tula, Tulasang? What is the basis of Koto Jaya epistemology about prophetic, prophetic matters? And then I add there, are there any influence of Franz Fanon in Koto Jaya writing? Uh, please unmute, brother. Yes. Uh... Thank you for the Professor Sahran. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, yeah. The first uh, from the question from Professor Faris As Azrael. Yeah. Uh, does Kuntawijaya have an aversive attitude or view regarding the heretic of Islam such as Sufism? Uh, uh, I was uh, and, and the misunderstanding the thought of Kunta Wichayo to reject, for example, the spiritual aspect of uh, yes, uh, Kunta Wichayo, um, uh, want to apa ya, rim, apa, mm, want to understand the spiritual aspect in Islam or maybe Sufism, for example, in general, not in narrow manner. For Kuntawicho, spiritual liberation for individual, uh, for example, uh, is not enough because uh, for Kuntawicho, liberated individual must carry uh, his or her burden to change the condition for of society well, from many dehumanization practice. And I can say that uh, we can uh, look from the Kuntawicho book that Kuntawicho took a lot on inspiration from Muhammad Iqbal. Uh, Muhammad Iqbal, uh, I think Muhammad Iqbal not reject Sufism, but he emphasized that individual transcendence throughout, for example, the Houthi concept uh, is only a part uh, from the uh, from the uh, teaching of Islam. Iqbal, for example, emphasized that at the, si at the same time, this liberated individual, for example, has also a social mission 
in equal time for example he uh, this uh, liberated individual must uh, challenge the colonization uh, practice in uh, india in pakistan so it's not about uh, spiritual in narrow manner it's about individual very individual stake if this uh, Uh, happen for Punto Wisoyo. Jadi jika spiritualitas yang di, uh, itu dimaknai secara sempit, yaitu bahwa ini terkait hanya dengan masalah individu, kemudian dia tidak akan banyak berdampak besar kepada sosial kecuali yang disebutkan Punto Wisoyo ini hanya mungkin misalkan kita bisa lebih banyak berderma dan lain-lain, tapi struktur tidak banyak berubah. Itu yang kemudian dia kritik dalam konteks sebenarnya itu. Ya dan. Okay. Uh, Bagaimana? Yang, yang kedua terkait dengan oh ya oke 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 kita sambung ya. Yeah. Allah. So now the slide is ready. So again we invite our dear brother Faslan to deliver the pen. I'm really so sorry for uh, interrupting. Okay, <coughs> so my title is uh, as you see the effect of Islamic tradition on resisting intellectual colonialism. Uh, could you proceed, brother? Yes, see next. Yeah. So uh, initially, uh, I'm mentioning about the possibility of alternative modernism staying within tradition in example of Malaysia. This is uh, important uh, because, as you know, uh, when we say modernity, modernism, it is related to the secularity and uh, changing uh, lifestyle uh, into a secular lifestyle, then uh, eroding uh, t- traditional perspective. But we uh, we will mention about alternative modernism uh, in regard with the uh, example of Malaysia. Then uh, how traditional Islam constructed a knowledge rationality and had effect on protecting the custom of people of Malaysia uh, uh, against to modernity and secularity. Then uh, the conflict between secularity and uh, Islamic thinking, Islamic uh, thought tradition. Could you proceed? Next one. Yes. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, when we say modernity, uh, it is a European concept. Then uh, it's uh, altogether positive and secular characteristic. It had a dominant effect on the economic, politics, society in all Muslim land, actually all around the world. Then uh, forced the people to change their tradition, so uh, to make uh, compatible with their tradition uh, according to secular approach. Then, could you proceed, brother? Thanks, man. So, uh, thinkers of modernity suppose that the process of modernization would have the same pattern as it was in Europe. So uh, they regarded the development of urbanization and modern life uh, would give the same result for all human beings. So they regarded, as I said, uh, they experienced in their land in Europe. So all human beings must have the same result, must have the same uh, experience uh, about modernization, urbanization. So uh, again, could you... Proceed. So, uh, according to this approach, the process would make people individualist and uh, being selfish pragmatists uh, make their lifestyle secular. Then, uh, unavoidably, uh, would weaken the, uh, their tradition and family bond, as it, uh, as went in Europe. Uh, Supporting this idea, uh, one of the uh, se- uh, scholars, Einstein, thought, and uh, he says the key meto- mottos of propose of modernity were the distin- distinguishing characteristic of secularization, industrialization, economic development, and progressive evolution. It is the uh, most important part of modernization. Then, uh, in other uh, side. Unavoidably, as we say, modernity signifies to refuse past custom, culture, then uh, erode uh, traditional thinking, traditional life, uh, then uh, a diversion from religion. 
because as I said, they had experienced in their lands in Europe, so they regarded uh, it would be same for all human beings. Could you press it? So again, according to this approach, all traditional societies, all societies actually, uh, are compulsory bound to change that is continuous process. So uh, the aftermath of this process, uh, their social life, cultural tradition, then will erode, will be eroded. Then uh, at the same time, in the main case, these developments uh, will be connected with growing rationalization and secularization that make their tradition logically coherent. Could you press it? Yeah. So uh, this process will, will mean that the development of why, uh, while involving this process of urbanization, uh, which uh, will break traditional perspective, value system, and it will grow secularization. Then at the same time, it will weak the, uh, weaken the traditional cultural system, traditional, uh, traditional cultural uh, identity. Then, uh, as I said, will make their lifestyle secular. So this process will be same for individual and for society. They regard that. In this case, uh, we are asking there, uh, what if the same modernization, urbanization, industrialization uh, proceeding in economy uh, would give the same result as uh, in Europe? Or if we have, if we have uh, another uh, option to make modern? Uh, we, do we have to uh, obey with the same process of uh, European. Uh, we are asking, then, uh, we, when we come to the sample of Malaysia, although Malaysia succeeded in development of urbanization, setting modern economy and establishing modern state, so we can see that clearly, Malaysia has still a uh, strong uh, tie with their family bonds, relatives, living in rural area, their custom, then their Islamic tradition, says uh, Khan Joel. So he investigates about Malaysia. As I said, uh, Malaysia uh, didn't change their lifestyle originally, didn't change their custom, didn't ch uh, change their Islamic identity, Islamic tradition, but uh, they succeeded uh, in being modern state, in, uh, modern uh, society. Could you press it, Rabbi? So, uh, as you said, uh, there is a dilemma there because the scholars of modernity were supposed that the way of producing in modern institutes, economy, politics, industry, is only possible with Western modernity. But we can see that in the example of Malaysia, Malaysia breaks this stereotype and shows the opportunity that it is possible to have modern contemporary institutes by staying within tradition. Then uh, Kans shares his uh, conclusion. Then he says, uh, because uh, intended might, because of intended might, the uh, European scholars focus on the other societies with this perspective. So he called uh, academically the modernist, modernist anthropology. So he says that modernist anthropology is problematical because it is uh, not giving the best opportunity to understand the other society. So he says we need another uh, perspective. So he confirms the need of idea of various type of modernity. So it's not only one type. Uh, there is not only one type modernity. So they, they say we have to accept it must be another type of, of uh, modernity or modern, modern life. Uh, so the, the, he says they have to uh, change their mind about other societies, other tradition. Could you proceed then? So uh, after criticizing the methodology, their, uh, their methodology, 
then uh, he he showed the unsuff- uh, unsufficiency in total understanding of non-Western modernization, then a uh, focus on Southeast Asia, especially uh, Malaysia. Then he tried to analyze uh, Malaysia's own characteristic uh, with, with using uh, his uh, methodology. Then, uh, yeah, could you repeat it, please? He says, uh, when we look at the Malaysia, we, we easily could see uh, this city is already urbanized. Then uh, you can see many leisure centers, then uh, growth of cities, towns, modern urban life, then uh, all, for example, a modern state have, you can see the, all of them in Malaysia, in uh, Ma- Malay state. Could you proceed? So, uh, Khan concludes that Malaysia have already established rational bureaucracy, but keeping persisting of uh, traditional way, in traditional way. So, uh, he says Malaysia has adopted the capitalist economy in the process of food modernized. By the nature of modernity, split up, as you know, uh, the modernity split up the uh, religious thinking or religious tendencies and uh, state necessaries. But we can see in Malaysia, Malaysia uh, is already a modern state, but still have uh, their common political Islam. So he says this separation is not unfinished, but at the same time, Malaysia uh, a modern state. So despite vision of classical modernist theory, Malaysia is seen to be considered as incomplete in uh, regarding <clears throat> the European side. However, the country is urbanized, industrial, which keep considerable peasantries and tribal population on surviving out of urban area. Could you proceed? Thanks, now. So uh, he says, Southeast Asia, performs different way of modernity or to demonstrate several abnormal system of modernity. Then it is, is unique for this location. So uh, in my opinion, this kind of rationality developing in traditional side of Malaysia, Indonesia or, in, or archipelago is strongly related to process of uh, rationalization, rationalization with Islamization. Because uh, he says, Malaysian culture uh, is already uh, rationalist uh, with their culture. So we are arguing that this tendency of rationalization which comes, uh, comes from Islamization process. So uh, we referring that uh, to Nakib al attas So uh, Nakib al attas says, Malay people already rationalized their tradition with the process of Islamization. So they exclude uh, in contrast to rationalization, in contrast to uh, logic during the process. So uh, then uh, Atas underlines that uh, a Euro kind of uh, modernization because they have to change their tradition because of their tradition was not logical, was not uh, rationalized. So uh, he says, actually, the stage of secularization of the modern life, actually, at the beginning of Islamization, uh, at the beginning of uh, coming Islam. So this stage is is, uh, a progress for uh, Western society. But initially, we have this rationality process from the beginning. So he says Islam was encouraging the Muslim for observation experiment using rationality, but Western correctly at the, uh, their side was strictly opposed to these tradition. Yeah, could you please? In this respect, the pace of uh, traditional Islamic thinking that uh, looked down actually a stage of progression for the West. On the other hand, Atas underlines the Western secularity erodes this characteristic of Islam. So in this part, uh, we, we are giving uh, this idea. Uh, Atas advised us, uh, this is a, our unique characteristic. So we have to protect 
our uh, this car car uh, characteristic because uh, then we do that we uh, we protect our culture our tradition from the pressure of coloniality so islam islamic tradition gives us uh, that opportunity then uh, to see the impact of islam over shaping unique mindset in malaysia attas refers to the concept of god being existing time religion these all abstract concept already uh, made logical as i said uh, in the process of uh, islamization could you proceed please yeah so uh, as i said attas considers the process of islamization as initially the emancipation of human from the tradition of magic mythology animism then uh, national national culture being contrary contrary to islam from secular domination then islam had prepared to, uh, prepared uh, the archipelago for modern world then uh, he says we but we have to uh, make sure about secularization then we have to protect our unique uh, characteristic then uh, staying within uh, own islamic tradition has another aspect which is the way of resisting colonial inter intellectualism in the perspective of uh, orientalism the western modernity approach uses anti traditional theories as a tool for the sake of their interest so this idea come from uh, ferit alatas and he uh, uh, urged us uh, the all uh, uh, imperialist powers and colonial powers use anti traditional theories as a tool uh, so we have to uh, make sure about our tradition so uh, as i said making uh, the our tradition rational that it means uh, make our traditional with compatible uh, compatible with uh, modern life so in, uh, thanks to this we can protect our tradition from the pressure of coloniality then dominates brother apasna yeah so uh, as seen in example of malaysia to be modern protecting rational characteristic developing rationality in tradition within tradition rather than al altering into secular rationalism uh, and secular lifestyle so uh, as i said malaysia could show another type of modernization it is very important this could be regarded as alternative modernization then uh, it means the breaking colonial intellectual pressure that on the other hand uh, the process of rationalization of tradition was not for uh, was not new for the uh, territory actually for all muslim because uh, as i said islamization of uh, process of islamization in this case it should be discussed whether rationalization must be on the in secular version so uh, malaysia as i said showed the alternative modernization alternative modern life staying within tradition uh, thank you so much for listening to me if you have question i will try to answer thank you thank you so much brother fasan is a very interesting topic I think the the article you quote by Khan is very interesting. Uh, mm. uh, the apology of modernity. Uh, that's the long uh, article and some discussion on it also. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so so by, by by using that article is very good basis uh, for the topic. Uh, now we go for our last presenter today, uh, Brother Muhammad Azamir Azral bin Muhammad Azrul. Uh, he obtained both his. Um, Master, uh, bachelor's and master's degree from IIUM in English uh, literature. Uh, now he currently he is uh, an ustad, a school teacher <laughs> at one of the religious school, according to the, the CV I have here. Uh, now uh, Brother Azamir is a special student at Stack. Today he will be presenting a paper on portrayal of Islam in Malaysian literature in English. So, Brother Azamir. Barakalafik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everybody. Good morning inshallah. Hopefully everybody is fine. And without much further ado, we'll just start. Is that okay inshallah? 
Wow. Let. <laughs> so let me just get this started and then inshallah I will proceed. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiru amma ba'd. Good morning everyone. My research as brother Shahran has mentioned um in this round will be regarding the portrayal of Islam in selected works of Malaysian literature in English. Um, the idea of that is to consider how an Islamic identity is reified, that means it comes together, and in this case, whether it comes together with proper Islamic values or misrepresentation of Islamic values. So this will be the particular flow of the presentation for today, inshallah. I'll do my best to keep it within 10 minutes, brother Shara, so no worries. I will not ask you for extra time, inshallah. I will take care of you, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll go with the statement of the problem. I will also elaborate on one of the main research questions for this research and the methodology approach. And then the synopsis of the works, because you do need to have a particular background of what the stories are about in order to get the point, inshallah. Um, but we won't delve too much into that. Just enough for uh, background information, inshallah. We'll then proceed with the findings and then we'll wrap it up with the conclusion and further recommendations for future research, inshallah. Allah alam. So, we have heard today the stressing of how Islam is the way to go. Islam is the way forward. Islam is the means of approach with regards to particular frameworks, particular paradigms, you name it. But though this may be the case amongst Muslims, there is, however, a rising tide that Islam may not necessarily be the way to go, may not be the way forward because of its poor representation, or in this case, how it's discussed. So this research, I hope, will shed some light into how it is important for us to consider Islam in its entirety before we begin to discuss about Islam, inshallah. So the main focus of this will be focused on three particular um, Malaysian literatures in English and, inshallah, how they represent Islam. So the main research question for this research is how does... Malaysian literature in English represent Islam and its values. Quite clear cut, inshallah. And for the method used to analyze the text, I decided to go with narrative criticism, where you analyze the text and look at the similarities and contradictions or contrast between the text to see what they represent or what they present in this case, from an Islamic perspective, of course. So now I'll proceed with a very, very basic synopsis of the work. I won't be reading all of this. This is just extra information in case you'd like the slide later on, inshallah. But basically, there will be three works, or there are three works that have been studied. Green is the Color, written in 1993 by Lloyd Fernando. Fatima's Kampong, written by Ian Buchanan in 2008, as well as a recent entry into the Malaysian literary scene, um, Hannah Alkaf's Weight of Our Sky, written in 2019. So with regards to green in this, the color, it basically looks at the environment of Malaysia post the riots of 1969 and how all of the individual Malaysians, quote unquote, are working towards building what they identify as an actual Malaysia. Some of it is, or I should say, all of the characters, one way or the other, has as their premise a definitive understanding of what religion and how religion um, affects the making of this particular nation. So the religion element is quite significant in this particular text. In Fatima's Kampo, similarly iterated by Buchanan, um, it talks about kampong life. Um, our brother Al-Prasa mentioned just now, Alhamdulillah, how in Malaysia there is a like a dichotomy between modernization of life yet still retaining some elements of the village cultural norms, alhamdulillah. Similarly, so Buchanan captures this spirit in his work. But um, the element of Islam is also mentioned in this text, however, to varying degrees of success. And here I mean, of course, the misrepresentation, of course, inshallah. Eh? And the last one here refers to uh, Haina al Alta's Wit of Our Sky. She basically focuses her tale on a sister with mental... <laughs> Um, disorders and how she manifests her Islamic identity through the 
capitulation or dealing with these particular instances of um, mental disorder, particularly OCD. So now I'll move on immediately into the findings, inshallah, which I am sure would be what we are all here to understand, inshallah. So with regards to the finding, overall from the study of the text, I have found that Islam is misrepresented. There are instances of proper representation of Islam, but not to the degree of the, represent, of the misrepresentations of Islam, particularly in three points. The first is the element of shirk. The second is a very, very clear disconnect between theoretical Islam as well as practical Islam. And last but not least, um, the, the illustration of mistreatment of Muslims against others. Not necessarily non-Muslims, between Muslims and Muslims as well. So with regards to shirk, shirk, clear-cut, alhamdulillah, in Islam, it has no room. Um, so therefore, when we discuss about shirk, it needs to be approached in a particular way. Definitely, we understand the methodology of al sunnah wal jamaah is to appreciate the authority of the primary corpus of Islam, namely the Qur'an, wa sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this case, this particular verse of An-Nahl, chapter number 16, verse number 36, it mentions how, inshallah, there is a clear distinction between shirk and tawheed. In the works, alhamdulillah, the element of tawheed is not represented, but shirk is to varying degrees of success in terms of what they're trying to say. So one example here that I'll give you is from the green, is the color. This statement is given from an Islamic figure, an Islamic religious figure, to his underlings. The purpose of this talisman is to make you invulnerable. Hold your breath and recite Bismillah seven times. Fatiha once and Salawat once. Then recite this incantation I take from myself to transform myself. This talisman will protect you against bullets and cast out all fear in facing any threat from the enemy. This is clear-cut shirk. Um, either it is shirk al-Azghar or shirk al-Akbar, minor or um, major, is of course subject for further discussion should you wish it. But this is clear-cut, alhamdulillah. And coming from an Islamic figure to a fellow Muslims without proper explanation of what shirk is and what its impact is in Islam to Muslims provides a very, very destabilizing arena or environment of discourse, particularly when we discuss, discuss about Islamic representation, proper ones at that. Patimas Kampong, uh, the element of shirk comes in the form of the karamat. In Malaysia and in other parts of the Malay Archipelago, perhaps the karamat has various um, designations or implications. But in Malaysia, at least, it has to Sufi mysticism. And it is, alhamdulillah, um, a way to show or manifest a certain adherence to this particular Sufi inclinations, which is not necessarily Islamic. Allah Ta'ala alam. Another one here is from the weight of our sky with regards to the jinn. The jinn is a major character in the novel. But the way it's presented is the main character, Mel, a sister with the mental disorder, she has such a, a relationship with the jinn that supersedes her relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, giving the wrong idea that Muslims may not necessarily be inclined towards Allah, but perhaps towards his creation. And of course, alhamdulillah, there is another example of shirk. One other element that we must talk about is the disconnect between theoretical Islam and practical Islam. Basically, alhamdulillah, when we say theoretical Islam, we mean that Islam is based upon the Quran and Sunnah. Simple as that. But when we say practical Islam, it's how these two particular sources are translated, understood, manifested, manifested in actions. So um, there are three particular elements that talk about how these misrepresentations occur. First is religious diversity versus racial conformity. Basically, the works focus on race and not necessarily religion as the main makeup of the nation building, which is not necessarily what Islam champions. Uh, there's a quote there, Alhamdulillah, whereby the Malays during the riots were screaming, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. But that is a manifestation of their racial bigotry towards other races, not necessarily um, an element of religious diversity. And another way of showing or show that the misunderstanding of Islam is shown is through niya. In this case, malpractice of ruqya. In the quotes, you can see for yourself, inshallah, perhaps after this we'll discuss further, how 
the understanding of Islam, particularly in its dimensions, are grossly misunderstood and grossly misrepresented to represent Islam. And in these cases, it's Muslims who are doing that. And this is something that I'd like to talk further, inshallah, um, if Brother Shahram will allow after this at the end, inshallah. And the last point here will be the disregard for the hereafter, which I will focus more after this. It's not particularly significant here at this point, but basically a misunderstanding as well or misrepresentation of the hereafter. The last element here is the Muslim mistreatment of others. When Muslims show a mistreatment or ill judgment, clear cut towards other Muslims and others, it really gives a wrong idea of what Islam preaches, inshallah. In this case, in green is the color, it's about the abuse of sex or uh, marital relations between husband and wife. In Fatima's Kampung and Wittofa Sky, during the riots, none of the leaders were present. Only those under handling the issue, dealing with the problem. Where's the ruler? In Islam, rulers have a particular role. So with regards to the conclusion, inshallah, basically, these three elements are prevalent in the misrepresentation of Islam. The prevalence of shirk, the disconnect between what Islam is and how Islam is. And lastly, the mistreatment of Muslims over others. Um, I hope to be able to discuss that further after this, inshallah. Um, again, I'm not trying to say that the authors are intentionally doing this, but from the readings, it's perhaps, inshallah, their way of showing that Islam is being allowed to be distorted in the country, um, being misrepresented in a very large way. So these are, some, these are some of the questions that I have raised. In the end, who has the authority to talk about Islam? Only experts or not? Muslims or non-Muslims? And in the end, how should Islam be represented? Should it be represented half hazardly or in full? And last but not least, how do we resolve this particular issue? Ultimately, we resolve this issue by promoting a strong idea of what Islam is and what it should be. Allah Ta'ala, thank you so much for your time, patience and understanding. Subhan, um, Allah'ala, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much to all our four presenters. Alhamdulillah, all our heavy papers. Uh, we look forward for the full papers, inshallah. Uh, we invite again, Brother Nuruddin, can you make it a brief, Brother Nuruddin, the answers on the next two questions? We will spend maybe 15 minutes for question and answer and one question from for Brother uh from uh from brother Zainal and the rest can uh if any more question can please write it on the chat and mention the name of the presenter that you want to ask okay but Rudin, make it brief uh uh thank you brother Sahran. uh yes uh two question yeah uh left uh the first is what is the basis of kundawichoyo epistemology about prophetic matter uh if I not mistaken to understand the question, uh, my answer answer is the epistemology developed by Kuntawicho is Tauhidic epistemology, or Kuntawicho call it transcendental structuralism, uh, where the emphasis is how to we uh, live in a unified uh, life, not fragmented life. So for Kuntawicho, the mystification of Islam, for example, an industrial life is a, a wrong uh, model of life because it is based on fragmented view of life. For example, in Islamic mysticism, uh, or not Islamic mysticism, mystification of Islam, for example, in uh, Javanese uh, tradition. Uh, maybe I can, using the analogy from uh, al Atas uh, view of Islamization, that Islamization is the liberation of man first from magical mythologic and animistic uh, uh, what Kuntawicho mean mystification of Islam is uh, the first sentence of al -Atas, the liberation of man first from magical uh, mythological and animistic this is the magical uh, mythological animistic that uh, Kuntawicho reject so not 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 tasawuf no, but magical mythological animistic from uh, pre-Islamic uh, culture uh, and uh, the second question about, do you see any influence of Franz Fanon in Kuntawicho writing? Uh, this in regard of uh, solidarity with the oppressed, uh, for example, the farmer. Uh, uh, thank you for the question, Brother Sahran. Uh, <coughs> uh, I think I have uh, not finding uh, 
what uh, about uh, Franz Fanon in Kontowicoyo book uh, so far? Eh? Uh, what I have found is that Kontowicoyo what what Edward Said, uh, who also influenced in decolonial studies. But one interesting thing that uh, perhaps to be underlined that Kontowicoyo uh, very interesting in the Frankfurt uh, school figure named Eric Fromm. We know that uh, Frankfurt School uh, has made many criticism of Marxism itself, yeah, including how to make the change in society, uh, not by revolutionary politics, but with the critique of civilization based on the scientific studies. Uh, interestingly, for Kunto Wichayo, Fromm has developed uh, the issue of transcendent in his writing. Uh, for for Kunto Wichayo, uh, uh, Fromm has... Uh, Uh, says that the transcendent is an important important uh, to change the western uh, condition of western uh, society today however Kunta Wijoyo criticized from position because from divided spirituality into two namely oppressive spirituality and non-oppressive spirituality and for from religion is an oppressive spirituality that's Kunta Wijoyo disagree Because for Kunta Wijoyo, <coughs> by placing religion as an oppressive spirit, spirit, religion as a form of oppressive spirituality, from actually re- reducing, reduction, uh, re- re- reduce the meaning of spirituality itself. Because for Kunta Wijoyo, religion is an authentic and liberating uh, spiritual path. For I, for for me. Maybe Kunta Wijoyo not uh, explicit, explicitly uh, um, reading Fanon, but he, apa, he take many inspiration from a contemporary Western scholar, for example, from Frankfurt School. Maybe that's my response. Thank you. Thank you, Brother uh, Nainul Umam. There's a question on my Brother Izamir. Uh, thank you. Yeah. My answer. Mm. Islamic approach is the only one because Islam teaches ahlakul karimah uh, such as tolerance not only fellow Muslim but also to non-Muslim. Uh, examples such as Christmas holidays, Muslim as presents by giving them to celebrate uh, it's an even to keep the uh, to keep calm. Okay. 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 Uh, next one from Brother Izamir. I see already answered in the chat, but if you want to say it uh, orally. Sure, inshallah. Um, I thank you, my brothers, for the responses to the question. Um, Brother Sharan asked, can we detect Islamophobic elements? Yes, we can. The issue that we want to raise here is, inshallah, Why are these elements there in the first place? Is it because of global policies? Is it because of um, discrepancies of Islam itself? Literature is one of the ways for us to figure this out. At the very least, inshallah, in the initial stages, because of what it deals with and who it deals it with, if I can say that, inshallah. So, yes, definitely Islamophobic tendencies are there. But I, as I mentioned in the chat, I would ask, Who is bringing about this? This particular Islamophobic tendencies? Muslims or non-Muslims? Or um, a dichotomy of the two in this case? Allahu Okay. Uh, now we go to the final session. I will invite uh, three or four minutes, not more than four minutes for everyone, to just to stress out what the main point uh, of the present presentation. Uh, I think we start with Brother Arpaslan first, and then Brother Zainal, and then Brother Zamer, and lastly Brother Nuruddin. Brother Arpaslan, you for conclusion? Uh, my conclusion is, uh, so it is so important to protect our tradition, traditional Islamic uh, identity. So uh, it gives us uh, an opportunity uh, to, to protect ourselves uh, from colonial pressure. Especially intellectuals. So uh, the uh, Malaysia, as an example, is so important. So in Turkey, we try to build build up this uh, view, inshallah. Uh, of course, we tend to be uh, modern. We want to be modern, 
but we don't want to exclude our uh, Islamic tradition, Islamic identity. Thank you so much, you all. Thank you. How did I know? Okay, thank you. Uh, my con con concern is uh, character education is important uh, to uh, teach the student in universities uh, and school, yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, what is up, man? Better go, Fik. Ultimately, the representation of Islam is important. In today's age, everybody feels that they have a right towards the religion, as well as a right to express their opinions and fatwas about the religion. We need to have a clear framework on how to approach matters of Islam. And the matters, in this case, must fall under the purview of none other than the one who de designated the religion to be the religion of truth. That means Allah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5, verse number 3, and authorized by his messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah. So ultimately, when we talk about Islam, when we deal with Islam, it has to fall under the authority of the Quran and Sunnah. Allah ta'ala alam. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Brother Nuruddin. Uh, thank you, Brother Sahran. Uh, maybe I have uh, two points. The first is the the idea of Islamization of history put forward by Kontawijaya is an important contribution to enri enri enriching the discourse, the global discourse about the Islamization of knowledge. The second, the Islamization of knowledge project is not a threat to West, to East, but it's a blessing for humankind, Muslim and non-Muslim, and also not only for human, but non-human alike. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, the all four papers are very important, uh, but I'll pass back.